good morning to you all here. Happy Saturday, April 26, 2025. Hope you guys are doing well out there. And uh, sadly, guys, I don't have the best of news today uh, as we are expecting the threat for a significant tornado outbreak potentially on Monday here. The Storm Prediction Center upgrading to a very rare day three moderate risk at the level four risk out of five. We're going to talk about that here again in just a few minutes, but just back to back severe weather days here today tomorrow going into monday going into tuesday going into wednesday and possibly even on thursday here and then a little bit of a break and then potentially another significant area of severe weather going into the second week of may so we've got a lot to talk about guys possibly even a death ridge on the table uh in terms of the heat wave that could be coming in in terms of the first week of may as well so uh we've just got a lot to to get into here so i'm going to make this video here uh for you guys this is going to be the same video recorded on youtube and on tiktok today i'm not going to have time to make a second video also we will be in live coverage mode later on this afternoon me and rochelle have a birthday party we have to go to this afternoon so i'll be later i'll be on later than i typically get on this afternoon but nevertheless we're gonna have a full breakdown on stream tonight talk about what's gonna happen get you guys ready to go because this could be potentially something significant that we have not seen up in the midwest in quite some time i also want to mention as well guys we haven't seen a day three moderate risk since 2011 the last time iowa minnesota and uh wisconsin and illinois were in a day three moderate risk was 2011 it's been 15, 14 years here to the day that we've seen that happen so uh just quite a uh a, a, a not a great situation that's going to be unfolding up there there's some fail modes there's some there's some things that could limit uh the, the, the high ceiling for this event but right now it looks like it's all systems go in terms of the severe weather threat there on monday so we're going to break that down for you guys we're going to talk about the rest of these days here we'll kind of get into that here i will mention just now on your screen, we've got a big area here of thunderstorms ongoing, a big complex of storms working its way through Oklahoma. So if you're out and about uh, this morning here, this afternoon and early in Oklahoma, uh, you guys will probably be seeing that rain moving through and leftover MCS from yesterday's severe weather setup. I also want to talk about one thing. We had a supercell thunderstorm yesterday that was basically hovering just outside of Lubbock, Texas yesterday for over 8 to 10 hours. It was stationary for over 8 hours yesterday, dropping uh, lots of lots of rainfall, uh, significant hail up to 4 inches in diameter plus. Uh, we just had a lot of significant hail yesterday and a couple of tornadoes uh, that were out, some very photogenic tornadoes yesterday. So we'll have one more day of this down here in Texas and eastern New Mexico and Oklahoma today. Um, we'll talk about that here in a second as well. And then we'll kind of be moving into more of a synoptic uh, jet stream where we're going to see this significant severe weather and tornado outbreak here. And I'm going to tell you guys right now, please, please, please uh, take these risk zones seriously. I cannot stress that enough as this is going to be uh, something we have not seen in these areas in many, 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 many years. So um, I, I can't even rule out a high risk potentially on the table for Monday potentially as well going into the next 48 hours so uh, we're gonna break that down for you guys I do appreciate as always if you guys will like leave a comment we'll have a live stream later on this evening uh, I know you guys will have bunches of questions so go ahead and fill that comment section up with questions and I'll try to get them answered throughout the day uh, let's go ahead and dive into this shall we all right, and we'll go ahead and start out with the Storm Prediction Center's outlook for today here on Saturday. We have a marginal risk of severe weather that goes along the East Coast here. This is from a uh, system that's going to be moving through, a kind of a frontal system that's going to be moving through here. We'll have the threat for some low end hail, some damaging winds. Just a low end level one risk out of five here for South Carolina, North Carolina, portions of Eastern Virginia, up towards Maryland and Eastern Pennsylvania there. So just be mindful of that if you're out and about today on the Saturday. Outside of that, general thunderstorms here in the plains, all the way up to the high plains in the Midwest, general thunderstorms as well as we go over here towards the uh, West Pacific. And then we do have a marginal risk here for portions of eastern New Mexico, back up into southern Colorado, western Texas, central Texas, and a slight risk here that goes into Oklahoma. I wouldn't be shocked to see the Storm Prediction Center by the time I, you know, have this video out to you guys. There will be an update. I wouldn't be shocked to see a slight risk be issued here for a hatched hail threat, as well as a couple tornadoes back here again into eastern New Mexico and west Texas. So, um, we do have an elevated tornado risk today, guys. If you're in and around Oklahoma, we have a 5% tornado risk for southeast Oklahoma today. So, that's going to be another round of storms. So, the initial round of storms that's coming through right now, is going to move out, and we'll have another area of supercells that are potentially going to fire off this evening and tonight uh, that could give us an elevated threat here for a couple tornadoes outside of the Oklahoma City area. Now, Oklahoma City, you guys are in a 2% tornado risk, so do be mindful of that. Norman as well, you guys are also in that. Just have a way to get alerts on your phones today. Uh, like I said, we'll be covering this later on tonight. If we need to get on, we will. 2% uh, tornado risk outside of that as well. I wouldn't be shocked to see a 5% get upgraded here as well. We'll just kind of have different little areas of mesoscale features that can allow for some large hail, some damaging winds, and a couple tornadoes. Wind threat at 15 and 5% for winds up to 60 to 70 miles per hour in both regions there and the hail threat at 5%. Wouldn't be shocked to see that hail threat go up just a little bit, but um, we'll have to see what the Storm Prediction Center does. So that'll be today's outlook. We go to tomorrow for Sunday, and tomorrow has high potential, but also 
a lot of fail modes. We basically are going to have, and I've talked about this the last couple days, a huge capping inversion. Uh, basically, our troughing is a little bit late. If our troughing was going to be coming in, or our jet stream coming in, uh, if it was going to be coming in about six to eight hours, maybe ten hours earlier, we would be looking at a huge tornado outbreak uh, tomorrow for Sunday. But that's not the case. The reason why that is is because our jet stream is a little bit behind with our with our instability with our dew points, and so we do have a conditional slight risk here for a couple of tornadoes that could develop. Uh, I will mention this as well. There is a level one risk that does go from North Dakota and Minnesota all the way down here to Texas. If any storms can fire off in any of the areas in this risk zone for tomorrow, especially in the central plains near Oklahoma, near Kansas, near Nebraska and South Dakota, there are very, very high tornado parameters that are in place. So if we get any storms that do fire off and become surface based tomorrow, there will be the threat for a strong tornado uh, if that does validate. So we're going to have to see what the Storm Prediction Center does with this risk zone. Personally, we haven't seen a lot of initiation on model runs going up to this point. We'll talk about that here in a minute as well, but very, very conditional risk zone tomorrow, so we'll be on tap for that. 2% uh, tornado risk there in the green for portions of Nebraska, uh, up towards northwestern Kansas there, wind threat at the 5% here, and then 15% uh, there in the slight risk, and then a hail threat also 5 and 15%. So we'll see what Sunday has to offer here uh, in terms of a severe weather risk. Now we're going to talk about the big day. <clears throat> this is Monday here, guys. We have a level 3, or sorry, a level 4 uh, moderate risk here for southeast Minnesota, western Wisconsin, and northern and central Iowa. This includes St. Paul, Minnesota, Des Moines, Iowa, Cedar Rapids, Rochester, Minnesota, Bloomington, Minnesota, and Minneapolis, Minnesota. I know that's crazy that I'm calling these towns out. We have not seen a risk zone, guys. As I mentioned, a day three moderate risk has not been issued by the Storm Prediction Center in this region since 2011. So I need you guys to please be taking this risk zone seriously. Also, I want to mention as well, the Storm Prediction Center will update this risk zone again at three o'clock this afternoon. I would not be shocked to see this level four enhanced risk or level four moderate risk get shifted down south and expand towards Kansas City, Missouri. We are seeing very, very high tornado parameters as well down towards uh, eastern and central Oklahoma as well as northwestern Missouri here. That risk zone could be extended down, so I, I expect adjustments to be made. I also would not be shocked to see eventually at some point maybe even a high risk, a level 5 out of 5 be issued. We've had two high risk zones this year, and they have validated. We've had multiple moderate risk zones this year as well, and they have validated. This is a very high end day. If you are in risk zones for Monday, marginal, slight, enhanced, or moderate, especially up here in the Midwest and into the Central Plains, you have got to have NOAA weather radios. If you have them, use those charge those up have alerts on your phones there are multiple apps you can download to get those alerts on your phones i'll kind of go over those in stream today as well also just just be t monday's a day to stay home um you need to stay home monday if you're able to i know schools will probably be ongoing hopefully these storms will not initiate until after schools happen um we'll talk more about that in tomorrow's outlook when we get the official day two video in but I just want you guys to know this has very, very significant tornado potential on it. And I'm going to read to you guys what the Storm Prediction Center has, quote unquote, from their wording here. It says an outbreak of severe weather is likely across portions of the Midwest, and upper Midwest. Large hail, severe wind gusts and strong to intense tornadoes are likely. And then we have this big wording right here, guys, that I need you guys to pay attention to. Please, this is not just take this with a grain of salt. You've got to be ready for this event. A tornado outbreak with the potential for strong to intense tornadoes is possible on Monday. So it's not likely uh, we know we're going to get a severe weather outbreak, but the tornado outbreak could be very, very much at play, basically from anywhere up into portions of Minnesota, Wisconsin, all the way down here to central Texas. So a huge risk zone on Monday, guys. And the probabilities, the, these just, these show it all here. We have a 45% hatched uh, categorical upgrade here with that moderate. So significant severe weather, large long track tornadoes, violent tornadoes, significantly large hail, damaging winds being over 70 to 80 miles per hour inside that hatched region. This goes from basically southeast Minnesota, western Wisconsin, all the way through Iowa, down into Kansas City, Missouri, down through Oklahoma City, and into central Texas here. So a huge, huge day, guys, for severe weather on Monday. And as you guys know, we will be covering this day uh, wall to wall. We'll probably be on very, very early in the morning to get you guys out the door and ready to go for this on Monday. Uh, but please, guys, for the love of all that is holy. If you don't believe what I'm telling you in this video, please go look it up. StormPredictionCenter.com. The same risk zone is on there. This is valid. This is legit. I'm not making this up. The fact that people think I'm making this up is kind of wild to me. It happens sometimes. So, uh, But anyways, that'll be on um, Monday there. And then guess what, guys? We're not done after that. We've got another risk zone here uh, for your Tuesday. Another huge slight risk for basically Texas all the way up here in Oklahoma and then all the way up in the Northeast. This is going to be more of a damaging wind and a hail threat, so we're not expecting a tornado outbreak out of this. I will say I wouldn't be shocked to see the Storm Prediction Center put an enhanced risk up here towards Illinois, Indiana, Ohio, and maybe Pennsylvania for a higher wind threat, maybe a damaging wind threat, maybe a higher tornado threat. We'll kind of see what happens over the next couple of days with this but nevertheless 
huge, huge amount of instability that'll be in place, and the dew points will still be very well up into the 60s uh, across this region here. So another day on Tuesday for significant severe weather. And then guess what, guys? We're not done after that. We've got another risk zone. Finally, the Storm Prediction Center has mentioned the possibility for a level 2 out of 5 risk here for severe weather again uh, in and around the Dallas-Fort Worth area, Arlington, Plano, Garland, Texas, Southeast Oklahoma here. Again, for the threat for damaging winds, hail, and maybe a couple tornadoes on Wednesday. And then I do expect a risk zone to be issued somewhere in the Ohio Valley again on Thursday uh, for the threat of another severe weather event as this system moves into the Ohio Valley on Thursday. So we've got a very, very long stretch, guys, of severe weather. These last couple of days of these mesoscale days that we've seen severe weather in Texas and Oklahoma, these have not been driven off of jet stream winds. These have been driven off of mesoscale features, basically just dry line setups. This is typical for that time of the year that we see that down there. Uh, but when we have a system that's getting ready to come through, like on Monday and Tuesday, for instance, completely different, synoptically driven, we're going to have all the features there for what could become a very, very you know, significant event. So I need you guys to be ready to go here. We're going to go ahead and talk about the herd model run here, kind of talk in depth on what's going to happen today. This is the ongoing mode of thunderstorms and convection that's ongoing this morning and through this afternoon here. This should start to clear out later on this afternoon. We should start to see supercells fired off down here in southeastern portions of Oklahoma. Uh, wouldn't be shocked to see a couple tornadoes down here south of Oklahoma City. Oklahoma City are in a 2%, as I mentioned. So we'll see if they keep you guys in that risk zone on the next update. But nevertheless, we're going to have to watch once again uh, eastern New Mexico and west Texas here for a couple of strong uh, supercells that could produce some significantly large hail once again. Some damaging winds. You can see those storms firing off in the same exact areas again as we've literally seen the last four days of row, uh, uh, again. Uh, um, in a row. So, um, can't get my words out today, guys. Sorry. Um, a couple of these could be in around the Lubbock, Odessa, Midland area again, south of Amarillo here. We'll just see, I think the Storm Prediction Center will probably upgrade this to a slight risk given the, uh, model runs that we're seeing here with this. Now, another thing I want to mention, this should be out of here by no later than midnight tonight. We'll see those storms move out and then we'll have just basically rain showers moving across Missouri, Arkansas from whatever mess of storms goes through Oklahoma and eastern Kansas today. So not expecting a big, big day of severe weather like we've seen the last couple of days, but enough there, there will be, you know, the cause for tornadoes and damaging winds some hail. Now, but another thing I want to mention you guys, I'm just going to briefly show you guys to Tomorrow, we'll talk more about tomorrow when the her model runs, you know, starts to run a couple more times. Uh, we'll do this more live on live stream tonight in tomorrow's video. But I want to mention the tornado parameters tomorrow, guys. If any storms can fire off here in Kansas, Oklahoma, uh, in Nebraska, these are your significant tornado parameters, pretty much almost maxed out. So what I'm saying basically is we're not expecting a tornado outbreak here tomorrow, at least as of right now. But what I'm saying is any any discrete storm that can break the capping inversion in the atmosphere, we will have a huge cap in place tomorrow. That's why you're not seeing this, you know, huge upgraded risk zone that's causing like you know like tornado outbreak potential or any of that but any any storm that can become surface based will have the threat for producing a tornado maybe even a strong tornado so we're going to hope that we keep the capping inversion uh lit on tomorrow and we can keep things at base sunday because Monday, things are going to change here. And I do want to show you guys here. These are going to be the tornado parameters going into Monday, uh, Monday afternoon. We're going to see those parameters start to increase. We could see supercells developing as soon as, you know, after lunchtime here between 3 and 5 p.m. in and around southern Minnesota, western Wisconsin. But I want you guys to see something here. That moderate risk is up here into Iowa, up into western Wisconsin, and up into southeast Minnesota. We're going to have a stronger area of tornado potential down here into Oklahoma, into Kansas, and into southeast Nebraska, and in and around Kansas City, Missouri. If this continues to trend and we actually see storm initiation develop with this, which I think we will, um, we could get a moderate risk extension that basically goes from Oklahoma all the way up into Minnesota and Wisconsin. That'd be a pretty big one. We saw something back in uh, the end of March in and around the Ohio Valley in the Midwest, again, with a pretty elongated moderate. And I, I do think, once again, if that does happen, happen a uh, high risk could potentially be on the table. So. We just, we've got to be mindful here, guys. A very, very volatile setup going into Tuesday or going into Monday. And then even into Tuesday, we'll see those tornado parameters shift east here. And we can see a pretty open warm sector, basically from Indiana, northern Kentucky, Ohio, the Great Lakes, up into portions of uh, northeastern Ohio, Pennsylvania, and western New York here for the threat for a couple of tornadoes. And then we'll have the threat for damaging winds, some large hail in and around and across the region here. So um, just a lot of severe weather to get to, guys. We're going to keep you guys covered. We're going to be going live every single day starting this afternoon, talking about this and keeping you guys updated as always. You guys know I give my heart and my devotion out to this as much as I can. So you guys are going to be in good hands as always. We're going to keep you guys going with this. Now, I think I want to talk about really briefly. I've pretty much talked about this in each video each day in terms of where this is going to look like on the jet stream here. This is our 500 millibar wind with height. Gives us an idea of what's happening. Continuing to see a ridge build here. This is going to help bring in the uh, instability values over the next couple of days. You can see our low pressure system that's going to be causing this significant severe weather outbreak on Monday. To the west here, what this is going to basically do is it's going to start to move in later on tonight here. And by tomorrow, we're going to have a little 
little bit of instability, or not a little bit, we'll have a pretty good amount of instability. We'll have enough wind shear here, some divergence that could fire off a couple of supercells in and around that slight risk that we've got in Nebraska and northern Kansas there in southern portions of South Dakota. So we're going to have to watch this, but a very strong negatively tilted trough. And I, like I said, I couldn't imagine if this trough was coming in a lot quicker, we would be looking at a full-blown tornado outbreak tomorrow, but we're not because it's a little bit far behind. But Monday will be the day because the timing on Monday is a little bit better in terms of that trough moving in here. So we'll see that come in on Sunday. A couple threat for a, or a isolated to a scattered threat for some wind hail and a couple of tornadoes, maybe an, a strong tornado if that does happen. And then I want you guys to see something. That trough moves in here. And I want you guys to pay attention to something. I haven't talked about this too much and it needs to be talked about just for today, for instance. You guys see this red jet streak here. This is what we call our jet streak max. You have your jet stream that flows basically from south to north all the way up here. Very consistent jet stream. Very, very nice. Very organized here um, in terms of that. But you have the red wind bar. You have your red showing up there. Those, those brighter colors. What that is called is a jet streak max and what that basically means is you're going to have higher concentrations of mid to lower level shear that are going to help organize and keep uh storms maybe more discreet maybe linear we're going to have to wait and see until you know what the short range models really do with this tonight and tomorrow but this adds an emphasis we've seen this on our last two high risk days that we had this year back in the deep south and back up in the ohio valley in the arkansas event we saw the same event uh, situation happen and it led to uh, a couple of strong tornadoes and a couple of violent tornadoes as well so this is something that plays a big role in forecasting these higher end events days just a piece of information that we look at in the weather world there's a lot more that goes into it behind the scenes that i can talk to you guys about later on but this is a key importance into getting organized severe weather and we're going to have a pretty decent mid-level jet stream here of about 85 to almost 100 knots here in and around minnesota so we're going to have to see how this in fact happens but i want you guys to see something here we're going to have a surface low off the rockies a surface low up here this is going to help initiate both of these different modes from you know minnesota down here to oklahoma and then we're gonna have another trough that's gonna start to eject as we go into wednesday and thursday giving us a severe weather risk zone down here we'll talk about that here in a second but that'll be monday setup here and then we go into tuesday and tuesday we'll have a pretty decent west to easterly flow a little bit less of a tornado threat on tuesday but more damaging winds and hail that can, with a possible couple of tornadoes especially up towards michigan maybe northern indiana and ohio and then we see that next trough coming in there on sunday uh or not sunday but on wednesday and this could give us the threat for some organized severe weather some damaging winds some hail maybe an isolated tornado down here from Missouri down to portions of Oklahoma, Arkansas, and East Texas. And then we get this thing up into the Ohio Valley on Thursday, where we'll have probably a decent little threat for some severe weather in the Ohio Valley on Thursday. Wouldn't be shocked to see a day uh, a slight risk be issued in the day, I guess, five outlook here once that comes out tonight. And then I want you guys to pay attention to something. It looks like we're going to start to see a ridge set up here. This leads to drier, warmer temperatures, kind of keeps things a lot drier. You can start to get a drought to happen. It looks like we're going to have kind of an omega block pattern that tries to set up going into next weekend here. It's, you know, a little bit of far away, far away out here. You know, we're in May 3rd time frame here, so about seven to eight days out. But this is going to play a role in potentially either keeping severe weather around or not. And specifically the GFS model here and the Europeans starting to show it wants to bring in this just ridiculous, ridiculous troughing pattern. This is what we call a ski jump trough. If something like this happens going into the first week of May, this would bring the potential for another significant severe weather of outbreak. And that's eight to nine days out. We'll start to talk about more of that once we get closer to that event happening. I want to get you guys through this, but we could be looking at more uh, significant severe weather after this event happens. So just... A lot on the table, guys. A lot getting ready to happen here over the next couple of days. It's going to be a wild, wild ride in terms of severe weather here. I, I just, I want you guys to, you know, share this video out. Let people know. You guys know I'm not going to steer y'all in the wrong direction. Just please, please, please be weather aware. I can't, I can't stress that enough here. Here's an idea of our precept, what it's going to be looking at here. You can see the showers and the storms, some widespread shower convection. The severe weather will be ongoing there on Monday and Tuesday. You can see that cold front extended down to Oklahoma. And then on Tuesday, we're going to have a wide area of showers and storms that are going to develop from the Ohio Valley down to the southern plains and up into the northeast. And then after that, that system moves out on Tuesday, and then on Wednesday, we get another little trough coming in there, and then potentially on Thursday, and then after that, things get a little bit more uncertain, but it looks to be we're going to have some ridging and then potentially another significant severe weather event going into the uh, official first weekend of May here, potentially, so we'll have to wait to see if things are going to, you know, get going with that, and um, we'll go from there, so I do appreciate you guys for this. Please, please, please share the video ask questions if you guys have them. I'll try and check my phone throughout the day. I probably will not have a live stream until about four to five this afternoon. So just because we're going to be out and about today. So I do appreciate y'all for watching. Do stay safe, guys. Now is the time to prepare. As always, have an uh, emergency kit. Have just everything ready to go. Food stocked up uh, for a couple days in case you get hit with a natural disaster, tornado, damaging wind, large hail, anything can happen in these type of events. So um, I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. We're going to be hard at work getting the stream and everything ready to go. We're even going to have a couple storm chasers uh, ready to go for stream as well. Super excited about that. But um, other than that, guys, have a wonderful Saturday. Be safe and be weather aware.